Right, hi guys, welcome to part two of this video. Um, I briefly showed you what we were doing in the last video. We've got to repair something which has been repaired multiple times before, which, uh, and uh, it's not very good here. It's a bit of an exhaust system, and this bit here, as I explained, is the cabin heat exchanger. And that cannot leak carbon monoxide into the cabin. Uh, otherwise it would be bad, but uh, looking at the way it's been repaired, it probably is, and I'll just try and show you this. If I point, now that I've cut the end off, if I point the camera down the inside, this might work. And get the light out of the way, come on, no, yes. Come on, I'm sure it can work. Well, yeah, you can see it's like the moon and the stars, there are holes in it. One, two, three, four. I can see at least four pinholes there. So, I think it's fair to say it's had it. And we're uh, trying to do a substantial repair on it. The new part is seriously expensive, so we'll see what we can do. Alright, this end here, the tailpipe end, was reusable. So we cut it off, we joined it here to a uh, high quality piece of uh, 321 MS spec stainless steel tube, a stabilised grade, which is going to be the new, form the new cabin heat exchanger. And uh, we've got to take this end up to meet the cylinder flanges. So. Uh, Hopefully show you a bit more of that and we'll see what can be reused from the other one and uh, how it can be done. Okay so the next thing I want to do is uh, fire up my trusty hypertherm plasma cutter and just remove this stack here so we can inspect this for, for reuse if possible. Generally these, these fare better than the tubes themselves. The tubes are very thin, less than 30 thou, and particularly this area seems to run at a temperature where carbide precipitation happens. Usually this this area is the bit that suffers. You can see now I've peeled this shroud back. There are holes there. Anyway, the old, uh, the old hypertherm plasma cutter never lets me down, so I'm just going to whiz around there. Won't take a second. I don't know how we managed before these things, really. Look at that fine line there. These are brilliant. It's like uh, drawing on it with a pencil. Here we see the slight difficulty with this part. Um, I've removed it there. And uh, the way it's welded to the heat exchanger is quite common on these parts. It's pulled through so it comes, the foot of it here, if you like, is actually tucked inside the heat exchanger, the big tube, which goes around like this, uh, pulled up, and then the wider tube is welded just around there so you have a kind of a flange inside so the gases making their way through don't impinge on this welded area at all. It's not uncommon in exhaust systems but we've got to replicate that so I've got to grind all this carefully away and the old weld hopefully cut a slightly smaller hole in the in the big tube than I need pull this up through from the inside and try and form a new weld just probably just above where this one was where I know the material sound. Uh, we'll see if we can do that tomorrow. Alright, I've been round the foot of this while I'm all with a flat wheel. I'll do the rest by hand. Um, you've got to be careful with power tools on thin stuff like this. It's easy to make it too thin. But that's fine. I'll do the rest by hand. Yeah, you know, as soon as you see shiny metal you need to stop. I only polish out those 80 grit marks as well, really. Uh, 
um, clean up the inside a bit. That'll be the next stage. Uh, it's getting there, but there's still a bit of work to do. Um, so I don't want any of the uh, engine deposits and soot that's inside to be incorporated in the back of the weld. So it's got to be really clean. That's where a lot of the time goes on a job like this. Um, it's getting things cleaned up, but yeah, so when it's something critical, it's really not an option to uh, to skimp. We could. Uh, there's probably a lot of carbon and lead in those engine deposits, and uh, you certainly can't have carbon incorporated into a stainless weld. Um, so it's got to be it's got to be clean, clean and bright like the outside, uh, perfectly clean and bright. Uh, anything else is not really an option. All right, now I've got some references from one of these that I did before. So uh, I've marked the large tube there for cutting. I've got to cut about a quarter of an inch inside that line. I remark and cut accurately a quarter of an inch inside that line and polish it all out and then tease it upwards uh, to accept the, the fitting that goes in there, which is what I've just been cleaning up. So, do some marking, some plasma cutting, and see how that goes. With my shaky hands, I keep uh, a lot of bits of odd bent scrap metal that I can quickly use. This is actually brake pipe, quickly use as a guide. To make some slightly more accurate, smoother cuts and much easier to clean up. I don't want to go too close to the metal. Let's see how that works. It really worked quite neatly, um, even with something as crude as a plasma cutter. Yeah, that's the result. Not too bad. Um, as you can see there's a little bit of deburring to be done. I need to take about a sixteenth of an inch off all the way around. Polish and deburr so we don't have any uh, nasty sharp edges or oxides in that, that edge before we tease it out to accept the, uh, the fitting. I'm just working around it with a file here. Okay. to make the time taken for these these parts of the job. Often with a welding job the welding is maybe 10% of the time spent. Anyway, we'll get there. Pliers. I hope I haven't marked it there. I don't think it's, it hasn't gone right through. And the challenge now is to get this uh, this bit to go in. Neatly at the right angle and we're getting there. Okay. And that's all I'm going to do for today. I'll just clean up the tape and Give it some more polishing. And uh, yeah, I kind of had enough for today. Well, there's a little more cleaning and polishing to do there. We've kind of got the uh, 
the pulled through effect that we're looking for. I'm probably going to have to remove a little more material. You have to end up just having to tease it at the back and then tease this up uh, just to get the angle right. Um, it's not quite there yet, but it will come. Yeah, so it needs to go down, down at the back there. You get a really good fit up. Uh, makes the welding much easier, and also it's it's a better way to do it. You don't have a weld up on this edge here, where any uh, any undercut or any problem with the weld could cause a crack to propagate. You have a, an easier weld and a stronger weld, probably. And uh, can we see up the inside? Maybe. Get some light. Put my phone in there. <clears throat> you have this effect on the inside where the the hot gases will be introduced into this middle tube without sort of impinging or heating any of the welded areas. It'll be a smooth flow, which is uh, what we need.